Every day you and I get bombarded with negative news. Just like the body becomes what we eat, the mind becomes what we're putting in. It is important to listen to stories that not only gives you hope, but also inspires you and uplifts you. In this podcast, we're interviewing experts who will break down the solutions to the world's most pressing problems. And I promise you, if you listen to this podcast, you will not only stay informed, but you will also feel more energy in your life. Welcome to Great.com Talks with... In 2015, the United Nations adopted 17 Sustainable Development Goals, and the principle behind these goals is leave no one behind. And today we're going to talk about how to reach two of these goals, maybe more. Um, The goals we're going to start focusing on is the goal of number four, quality education, and goal number 11, sustainable cities and communities. And to understand how we actually can do that on a practical term, uh, we have invited two youth leaders from Vesta Management Committee. And the first leader is Cindy, who is in charge of the Vesta International School Programs. So I want to say welcome, Cindy, to, to this interview. Thank you, Spirit. Good to be with you. You are in South Af- Africa, right? Yes, I'm in Johannesburg, South Africa. Thank you. And the second leader is Sifundo, who is working in the Vesa Bush Pig Education Center to help raise the environmental awareness for the students. Uh, that's at least my assumption here. So Sifundo, welcome to this interview. Thank you very much for having me, Spirit. Where are you located right now? I'm in South Africa, in, in Limpopo. Right. So you're in different cities. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I want to start this interview by kind of establishing what would you guys say is the problems, the the problem that you're trying to solve? Um, Maybe I can uh, start. Yeah, Cindy, you start. Perfect. Okay, great. Um, Well, it's pretty clear, Spirit, um, that globally we've uh, reached the point where environmentally we cannot turn back anymore. Um, And that is basically influenced by um, a lot of the the climate change um, contributing factors that we we basically are engaged with on a daily basis um, uh, in different parts of South Africa and the world. Um, And the the main problem that we're trying to to address through our cause and through the work that we do is is for people to get a better understanding of, first of all, what are the issues that we need to, to, to tackle to be able to like bring the world back to a more sustainable Um, way of living um, and also to include you know more sustainable ways of of, um, economically um, transforming um, the way we live on a daily basis Um, and you know people as the custodians of the earth have a huge role to play in how we actually get to a point where we can um, holistically you know socially environmentally and economically live in harmony with our natural surroundings again. So the the main issue that we want to address is is basically like getting people to understand that environmentally um, we are at a point um, where we cannot turn back anymore, but we need to be able to like put systems in place that includes everybody um, in a more sustainable future. Thank you. Um, that helps to clarify. Uh, and uh, I, uh, you, you guys live in South Africa. I live in Sweden. Uh, I, I see the same picture that you're painting here. That uh, we can't. There's no turning back right now. We need to um, work together to solve this. Um, Sifundo, um, could you help us to understand where does uh, Vesa, um, where does your org- organization kind of fit into the puzzle of, of helping to solve this uh, issue? Yeah, I mean, it's quite evident that we we are facing a lot of issues right now. Environmental issues are on the rise. Uh, Habitat destruction, um, depletion of um, natural resources, pollution. Um, I mean, a lot of animals are affected because of fresh water, which is getting depleted and and, and affected. 
And I mean, even the, the communities are also affected. I mean, human beings, the same people that are affecting the, the environment, they're also getting affected by all these other issues that we, we're facing in the environment. So how WESA fits in is we, we, we're trying to reconcile people with nature, men and the environment, because I think we've been separated um, like uh, for a long time and a lot of people are not aware how can they actually contribute to sustain the environment that we're living in. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's our role. And uh, the main, I mean, the key word there is awareness because most people are doing things because they're not aware. So um, we're coming in as a very strong pillar within the, the society to, to try and support the people and open their eyes and let them see what um, the wrong things that they're doing to the environment without knowing because I think th there's a lot that has been done in terms of policies and um, uh, legislations, but you cannot enforce a legislation without educating people. People would not uh, follow those policies and uh, they won't abide if you haven't educated, you haven't told them why they shouldn't do it. Yeah. And so it's important to, just to add on to what Sifundo is saying, it's important for people out there to know that, you know, WESA, um, is a 94-year-old youth-led and vibrant organization, you know, and, and the main initiatives that, that we basically drive are environmental education initiatives to support and enhance conservation efforts, you know, for a more um, holistic, sustainable present and future. Um, and, and we do that through the work that we do across South African schools, um, conservation education work, to become part of their teaching and learning processes at a school level. You know, we believe that learning about nature and our connection uh, to nature is just as important as, you know, learning about maths and science yeah. because it's all so interlinked to each other. Uh, the work that Sefundo and his staff um, are doing at uh, the WESA Education Centers are really exemplary in, in bringing learners and youth and teachers, community members into a space where they can actually reconnect with nature. A lot of the talk these days are about, you know, reconnect, reconnecting with nature, but it's also really about the connection of that nature. We can't just like say, or the nature of that connection. We can't just like say, we must put people into nature and teach them about nature because people know about nature. It's really about how they can see themselves and their everyday lived realities within that natural environment and how they use it. Um, and, and we also, as WESA, offer well-researched and well-designed accredited and non-accredited environmentally or environmental literacy courses where um, even, you know, companies can learn more about their impact and how they can contribute to the environment, even if they're, for example, an engineering company. How can we bring the environment in the things, the buildings that they build every day, you know, the construction that they do, how can we make that more environmentally sustainable. Um, these days we talk a lot more about a circular economy rather than a linear economy. And, and the entire um, economic sector can learn about how they can contribute um, to a more sustainable future. Um, and then lastly, just uh, to, to end off in how WESA basically contribute to this mission and, and vision that all of us are striving towards is through harnessing the potential for an inclusive sustainable tourism development sector in South Africa. So opening that up also to communities across the board for them to be able to use our um, environmental heritage um, to be able to like, you know, contribute to a, a more sustainable tourism development sector in the country. Uh, let me try to summarize, see if I understood here. So um, a foundation of what you guys are uh, doing, you're reconnecting uh, humans towards society, uh, towards nature, I mean, and by doing that, uh, um, you start to reshape how society kind of look at sustainability and uh, kind of implement that in, in all sectors of society. So that could be, would that be the end goal that you guys want to help to Change. Yeah, that's definitely a part of it, Spirit. You know, we, as, as Wessa and myself and Sifunda, we're not trying to turn anybody into um, what people call a greenie. You know, it's, it's really about seeing how you as an individual, whether you're a lawyer um, 
or whether you're, you know, someone um, working in early childhood development, you know, what is your role um, in basically bringing that, that connection um, with the people that you work and your business closer to a more sustainable future? Um, so, so you're right in saying that we're trying to like make the connections um, between people, what they do, what they are passionate about um, and their natural environment, what is their role and their connection to their natural environment and how can they basically contribute to making it a more just and environmentally um, just society for, for everybody who lives in that community. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to be a conservationist and environmentalist to make a difference. Um, I mean, a lot of people, are, they, they, they're becoming lawyers or engineers, but a well-informed lawyer will make uh, wise decisions towards the environment for the benefit of the, of the future generations. Imagine if you had a president who understood uh, conservation. I mean, even if you are um, um, a person who did uh, engineering, but if you understand what you should do for nature, that will actually play a huge role in conserving. Um, yeah, so it's all about all the different professionals to actually work together in this. I actually had an interview with CAPE, which is Canadian Association for Physicians, and they have started to see that um, uh, the environment is their big and biggest problem for human health. So we're talking doctors who want to help people. And they have then started to focus on the environment because there's so many people coming in and feeling sick from the pollution, then it makes sense to actually address the environment. Uh, so um, yeah, I really see the, the, the point what you're doing there with um, uh, educating the whole society in, in this issue. Um, Sifunda, I wanna go back to you a little bit about, um, I read on the website that it says that you guys are revolutionizing the way that you're learning or teaching. Um, do you understand what I what I'm referring to uh, when I say that? Could you help us understand what what is it that, uh, um, yeah, what does that symbol the revolutionizing of the education that you guys want to implement? Yeah, we we moving we in the twenty first century, so education is changing. We we bring in technology, we bring in new ways of learning. We even have a new, our new method of teaching called the ISTIM, where we, we are solving environmental issues um, using science, maths, technology, and engineering. So we're bringing, we're coming in different dimensions to try and, and, and get everyone involved and, and get people to understand. I mean, you learn how to calculate angles using a tree. So we're not actually stuck in the old ways of, of learning. We're bringing new ways of learning. Back in the days, a lot of people use something called rote memorization, where a learner gets into the classroom and a teacher comes in, they, they become the authority, they teach the, the, the learners and learners don't really have a say. But now we, we're trying to guide learners into the journey, in a journey of discovery, where learners are actually finding answers themselves. So it's more hands-on, um, it's construct, constructivism. We're getting learners to, to construct their own knowledge. So it stays with them. They're not really memorizing so they can regurgitate in a later, at a later stage just to write a test and pass and move to the next grade. So that's, that's basically the, 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 um, the way that we're trying to, um, I mean, the direction that we're taking as education centers to make learners understand better. Mm. Maybe, maybe I, also, Stuart, I can also, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you. If, if you want to elaborate more on the, the, the way that you see learning, um, Cindy, perfect. Yeah, I just want to, a very important points that Sefunda is raising. And, and I also want to say that's also where, you know, the impact of, of our work uh, really comes in. Um, and, and the first thing for all of our projects and programs um, is the fact that they are conceptualized from a point of skills development, you know, so this, this focus on skills development really ensures the sustainability of social and environmental action that is taken beyond the life cycle of a project that we basically implement, you know, but also it significantly contributes to the holistic growth, development and understanding of the youth um, and the people that, that participate in our projects. And that is why as an organization, we believe that 
environmental education is, is one of the greatest tools to achieve, you know, inclusive long term um, environmental, social and economic benefits. So it's really about how we do education differently to be able to, like Sefunda says, for them to be able to take action rather than just like learn something because they have to like say it again to someone else or regurgitate it to someone else for a test. It's really about that skills development component and for them to be able to like start to like think differently, um, think innovative, innovatively about how to solve environmental problems in their community, but also for them to be able to like have that skill. It's a lifelong and practical skill that they will have once, once they've done uh, the programs with us. So, so that's really what we, what we mean when we say revolutionizing education through the work that we do. Then I understand better. So uh, instead of seeing as something that, uh, instead of filling the, the students with knowledge, it's more how to help them develop the skills. That, that is a mindset shift. Uh, and you're saying then sustainability is actually a skill, that different skills, I guess. Is that, uh, what would sustainability, if you would break down sustainability to different skills, uh, mm -hmm. could you elaborate on what that would look like? Yeah, yeah, I mean, so, the, the skills and the competencies that we would want uh, learners, youth, um, teachers, community members to, to go away from our programs with is really about thinking differently about, you know, let's say, for example, problem solving. How do we solve a problem um, in a way that basically benefits everybody that that problem affects? Um, so it's about problem solving. It's about thinking um, more critically about our issues that we have. You know, so for as an example, I can make an example. One of our um, learners in, in the program, they, whenever you ask them, you know, what's the biggest environmental issue? They always say pollution, you know, um, and, and that's an isolated thing for them. And through the program, we try to like, let them think about, okay, so where does this pollution come from? Is it the fact that we don't have municipal services that come and collect um, your, your weekly, um, waste that you generate at your house and that immediately brings in a political issue right is it because you know people are not aware of it or is it because um, there are there's another issue within your community that basically creates a a, um, a pollution problem and that really is where we want them to like start to like think about the multi-dimensional um, kind of influences that bring about environmental um, challenges and similarly for sustainability, we want them to be able to like focus on different skills, um, critical thinking, you know, research skills, like asking questions, um, you know, not accepting the status quo um, in your community anymore. And, and that's that all of those not only forms the sustainability of the environment, but the sustainability of the growth and development of that particular individual. And that for me is what sustainability is. It's not one specific thing saying we need to do these things for the environment, but we need to be able to like have a more inclusive and holistic approach to the environment to be able to really truly realize sustainability. I see an image inside of my mind, uh, one of Sherlock Holmes, the curiosity of a detective, and then the integrity of Nelson Mandela. And then you combine those two, so you have a Nelson Mandela detective, uh, and then you have an army of children who, who just want to help the world. Uh, that sounds very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Um, and one of the things that I also read that you're doing, which for me was kind of um, cool, is that you're, um, you see the classrooms as also being outside. So then you would naturally connect towards the um, outdoor environment. Uh, so maybe Sefundo, um, could you help us understand what would an outdoor classroom look like? So basically we, we use the environment to teach the learners. So environmental education is about the environment, in the environment, through the environment. So you get a lot of learners doing natural sciences or um, life sciences from a classroom set up. So what happens is a teacher opens a textbook and teaches them about um, the transverse section of a leaf or teach them about a stem or transpiration or evaporation. So we take them out of the classroom and then we expose them to 
more practical lessons. So they're becoming hands-on, they evolve, they, they do experiments and they, they, they guide it on, on walks where they get to see diversity of plants and while they're learning about um, the photosynthesis or transpiration, evaporation, and all those scientific con components or concepts that they, they learn in a classroom setup. So, you know, you see when learners come to our centers, when they visit our centers, teachers will tell you that this learner looks different behaves different in the classroom. But outdoors, you get the, the best of the child. A child gets to be themselves. Children wants to be outside. So in a confinement, uh, or a confined room like a classroom, a teacher becomes more scary. You know, we grew, we, were, we all went to school. It's scary to have, a, have someone standing in front of you, teaching, opening a, a, um, um, a textbook. But our learning is based on fun. So learners get to engage in lessons while they're having fun. So we involve fun, we put games, icebreakers, where learners get to learn without realizing that they're learning. So we can actually have something like a um, uh, treasure hunt, where learners will be collecting data, for instance, scientific data, riding on bicycles, but they're not really aware that they are collecting data. At the end of the day, when um, an environmental educator comes back and consolidates everything, wraps up, Elena then realizes that they've learned a lot. So outdoor becomes very effective because at the same time you're revising what they learn in the classroom setup. And we are then uh, also teaching them other ways of learning about scientific concepts. Yeah, I really see why that would be powerful um, and much more fun to to learn in a river, to learn in a forest, to le learn around animals. Um, the the time is starting to go towards the end, and so what I want to understand here also is uh, for you, Cindy, if you would help us to, um, is there any f where you would recommend people to continue investigating or or searching for more answers if? Um, uh, where would you recommend people to to go after hearing this into or do yeah I, I would encourage people to to actively start participating in in local campaigns you know that uh, environmental social campaigns um, we are striving to become a more climate and environmentally and socially just world um, and through that we can really learn a lot from different people so I would encourage people to, to obviously in your neighborhoods, in your community, find local ways to, to contribute to a more um, environmentally friendly, environmentally safe um, and a more just um, community uh, for you and, and, and the, the people in that specific area. If you're in South Africa and listening to this, I, I would really encourage you to, to get in, in touch with myself, Sufundo, anybody at WESA to see what are the things that you can do to contribute to a more sustainable South Africa? If you're a parent, if you're a teacher, uh, get involved and see how we can um, incorporate your school and your learning processes um, into uh, the WESA programs um, and, and how you, you can basically actively play a role uh, to uh, be a part of the movement, uh, climate justice and environmentally uh, aware and literate movement that basically fight for a world where future generations will be able to enjoy the same benefits that we have today. And, and lastly, I just wanted to say that, you know, the, the WESA different programs and projects really complement each other. Uh, one example that I can make is an 11 year old girl um, who visited the WESA Bushpik Center where Sefundo is, um, was so enlightened and so excited about what she learned um, about her natural environment that she came back and she said to her parents that she definitely wants to like make a change um, in her community for, for a cleaner environment. That was in 2019. This year in 2020, that same girl entered the Our Wesa Young Reporters for the Environment program. And she, she made a video where she basically highlighted the different ways that people can, can take all the different um, things that people can do to keep the Johannesburg rivers clean. And she won the National um, Young Reporters for the Environment competition in South Africa 
went on to represent WESA and South Africa at the International Young Reporters Environment for the Environment Competition. And she came in second internationally. And that really is the power and the impact of our environmental education programs um, here at WESA. And we want more children, more parents, more schools to be involved in, in these programs for us all to basically contribute to to what we, a world that we want to see and, and we have to take charge and take action for that. Yeah, I mean, if I can add to that, um, I like the way you mentioned parents. She went back and told the parents. Um, there's a book called Becoming Brilliant or oh, science tells us that, uh, tells us about raising successful children that parents become agents of change for children, uh, children's success when they nature six critical skills, which is uh, collaboration, communication, critical thinking, creative innovation, and confidence. So I feel like parents should collaborate with us more to raise these children. And um, the, the main thing here is if we collaborate, we raise a better society. Um, I mean, you cannot divide one. If we all together, it becomes, um, we become stronger together. So. That's, that was a perfect example that Cindy just gave. Uh, parents should support us in this and send their children to our, our education centers or any other environmental education center that's around them. Let them get involved and, and, and make a change. Thank you very much for taking the time to, to clarify um, how to reach those United Nations Sustainable Development Goals that kind of the world has agreed upon that we're going to reach. And, and VESA is one of the players who are doing this. Uh, I know, uh, if I understood correct, you are also partnering with uh, Foundation for Environmental Education, which is also providing the world with eco schools. Uh, and just understanding that there's um, eco schools and uh, the VESA schools uh, teaching education, um, environmental kind of awareness around the world. Um, so probably whatever you are in the world, you could uh, probably find these kind of um, education centers to, to learn more about sustainability. Uh, so thank you very much for taking the time to be here. And um, yeah, I, um, I just hope that um, we get to see a, a radical improvement in um, where the world is going. Um, do you want to, Cindy, do you want to say any kind of um, last, um, is there anything that you want people to understand, um, for more, more people to understand as the last uh, thing here in this interview? Yes, sure. Thanks, Spirit. And thank you for inviting both Sifundo and I to, to have a chat with you today. Um, I think our last message would just then be that, you know, an environmental health, social health, economic health is really um, for a better quality of life for all. You know, today we're talking about a just transition um, towards uh, renewable energy and, and ways that are more beneficial for both planet and business. Um, and, and the one thing that Safundo and I are really passionate about is leaving no one behind. Everybody must be um, equally benefit. Everybody must equally benefit from that just transition. Everybody must equally benefit from a higher quality of life because we have a better environment. Because we are all better educated and understand how each of us play a, a role um, in that quality of life that can can reach everybody. So we want to encourage um, people across the world, in Sweden where you are, in South Africa here where we are, uh, to get actively involved in um, social, environmental um, issues in their community to be able to like make a way for that quality of life to reach everybody. 